I'm back. It's been a while. This is the reason why I've been gone. And I've been playing a lot of live here right now. So here it is. Fuck! Oh my god! Oh my god! He, he's chasing me! I see you. Oh. Why is it so black? Because... Who glitch! Look what I found! Oh, oh don't step on it! <laughs> now, moving on from that, to the original video, what is a tower defense game? Now, I'll be pulling a image for this, for people that click on the video, because it seems interesting. Now, now if you're a long-time viewer, or a tower defense maniac, you should know a tower defense game is a strategy game where players defend a location slash objective using characters of a specific role to defend the player's base or pinpoint. Is there a reason why you're explaining all these type of games and how the mechanic works? What's your point? Originality. Like, quite literally. My point still stands. And if the games you've just seen on the screens is tower defense games that is relating to anime. And that's what's mainly popular nowadays for the demographic. And I'm assuming that you guys are also tired of seeing a new tower defense game coming out just for it to be terrible, a complete ripoff, or complete bug, or the fan base just ruined it for you, which is just like me. Now in this video, I'm gonna explain a few issues that I had with some of these games and what games that I felt like have more recognition for originality. Special Tower Defense. This is my first pick on games that generally don't have originality or have devs that is genuinely trying to kill the game on purpose. Sure, I can admit that they worked really hard on how the game looks, appearance, and the lobby. They're all really good. And my main concern is the developers don't have a f clue on what they're doing. Okay, I understand that this is your new game, new project, but if Jameer, one of the co-owners, had issue releasing Enemy Clash, it's definitely going to move on to, towards this game. And this game genuinely had a few bugs off start and not having two times speed on release, which making story mode quite painful to go through. And I'm unsure about Infinite because I rarely play this game. Uh, before the release, a friend told me to play this game and I thought it would be a good idea to play. And we played it, had a blast, it was really fun until they released Update 1. Now, Update 1 was the most terrible update in any game that I played so far. And the only thing they mainly add was a limited unit called Itachi. And they only released that unit to show players what they can do, what opportunities they have, and what's coming next for their next update. Out of the nine characters they released, one is Itachi. Man, if you played the game, then you should know the Itachi incident. I probably said that word wrong. Excuse my pronunciation. But still. Making Itachi a limited unit on release for their first update, just one unit, was a pain in the ass and quite unfair for a few players. I understand that they released a limited unit that only goes out for 10k players, but wouldn't it defeat the whole purpose of restocking the game for Itachi Three to four fucking times. I'm no hater. I'm no glazer. I'm being for real straight up. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. For their mistakes, they restocked the game twice. Twice. The first time was to extend the period and have more players to have Itachi. That one was reasonable. Sure, they might be duplicates, but the value of inflation will like probably drop. Oh, holy fuck that they really screw up this time. Now, you probably can search up any video about the Itachi situation, but there was a bug specifically near midnight or night. I was there for it, but I wasn't really playing at the time. But uh, pretty much is since Itachi, you can only obtain them through the last map of Infinite, which is Hidden Desert or the map from Naruto, Sand Village. Every 10 waves, you kill a boss, and there's a small chance to get Itachi. And pretty much is, during that night, there was a bug that guarantees you to get Itachi. 
and holy crap, people were in general chat were going crazy. And that lead two things for the devs to do. Number one, roll back Itachi's. That would be great for some players that genuinely grinded Itachi threw away. And they're probably pissed off they spent most of their time on the game just for another player to have it guaranteed. Second, if they don't roll back it, they're going to lose players regardless. So it was a 50-50. One, they roll back. The players that did get Itachi from the bug are going to be pissed off quit playing the game. Number two, they did roll back it, but the players that did play the game are happy, but they're still going to lose a lot of players. So what could you do from a losing side? Nothing. So they roll back Itachi. Now, that was the most dumbest move they ever did. So that defeats the whole purpose of it being limited. Uh, this is the NPC that you have to talk to for to get Itachi, or the amount left. I had him because uh, I grinded for him after they restocked it. And I genuinely want to quit this game, which I'm going to do after posting this video. Yeah, this is what it looks like. Uh, okay, so... They restocked them again. Now, how many times are they going to restock Itachi for him not to be eliminated? Now, trading is going to be terrible if they ever do release trading. But still, it's good to have them if you like playing the game. Those are my opinions. The second game I pick is Multiverse Tower Defense. If that's the exact name, I could be wrong. This game came out two days after Special Tower Defense. Or, I'm pretty sure it was made more earlier, but just released two days after. I could be wrong. This game has shown multiple potential from the gameplay I have seen and played. Uh, the game is good overall. My main concerns about this game is how very low the player base is. This game has shown a lot of hard work on VFX, characters, and just the models in general. I'm a big fan of uh, characters that actually do look like them. Or has some realistic traits to them is how most of the metal units are basically limited in the game. And for instance, if you switch it up or see another game plays, you'll see like Kuma, uh, Law, Whitebeard, and Ace, and there could be more, I could be wrong, uh, are mainly limited, and they are currently meta on the game release. And that is really hard for future and beginner players to play the game. But despite how very generous the game gives you gems from the codes, I got roughly around 15k to 20k gems from mainly just the codes on his own. They could expire right now. But this game is very generous, and I felt like they can mainly improve on how making most units not limited. Another concern I have for this game is how very unoptimized the gameplay is. I'm going to try to pull up the clip here. If so, there's the clip. The clip is showing that Ace literally takes up all my frames, like quite literally. This is just one of the main units they can get from straight off the game on release. And you can see how much frames drops. If they only improve optimization, this game would actually be really good. And I really hope that more people play this game. And I'm going to try to play this game more of myself. <laughs> For my third pick, is going to be All-Star Tower Defense. One of my beloved games and what I love the most. Okay, so I recently quit this game three years ago, right before Seven Star came out. And when Mihawk first launched, Mihawk was pretty goaded. And he's, what can I say, mid now, I guess? I don't know. But after Seven Star first came out, I completely quit the game. And one of my things that I hate the most is when you return to the game, as a returning player or a beginner player. How are you going to get all these meta units if they're either limited or basically physically impossible to get without friends or players? I'm saying that because imagine you're trying to get MUI Goku that just released. And he takes around 15 to 5 items just to evolve them. For example, since I don't have Goku, I think, uh, I'm just going to get like Jiren or something. If I can find him, yeah. If I can find Jiren. Jiren. Roughly around the same requirements, and he requires the older version of Goku, Super Saiyan Blue. So, imagine each raid takes roughly 30 minutes to complete, 
and it could be more or less with three times speed. That's valid. Pay for the game pass, have friends to play with. That's completely valid. We're trying to get the characters together. But imagine two to three months later, like a month after the release of Goku, the hype is gone, and everybody that's in a full server trying to get Goku is completely gone. How are you going to get it now? Because nobody wants to do it anymore because they already have the unit, and they grind their ass off, and they don't want to play because they're burnt out. How could an average player get this unit evolved just by themselves in raid? There's no special traits. There's nothing to carry them by. They need specifically people. Specifically people with strategy that aren't brain dead and farming. Now, I don't want to return to ACD unless they actually listen and patch this obtaining method and making things get easier. Which will make people that did grind for it kind of sad for them, but just think realistically, how can a new player get this evo just by themselves? Without any meta units. So like, I'm gonna say like Minato 6 star or something. I'm not too sure what they changed for the past three years, but this game needs an improvement and the loyal fan base is switching up games. Because how long they take to update the game. Old ACD was peak, but I'm finally retiring from All Star Star Defense. Moving on to the next game Enemy World Tower Defense. Okay, there's a few issues I would like to explain, but I fully believe this game would have potential. What you're seeing on the screen right now is the loading time to load into the game for a PC user. This is decently long, sometimes it's longer than like a minute, but it's alright on its own. Um, the reason why I love playing this game is because after Anime sh uh, Adventure shut down, this was only one of the games that was out at the time. They started on some all-star tower defense and Anime Last Stand in development and having a complete crash out. Well, that's for a few players. Uh, the game has gone through multiple full reworks before. I'm um, pretty sure it disappeared for like a year or two, then releasing again. Uh, not too sure that's a specific time period they were gone for, since I mainly played this game as soon as Enemy Adventures shut down. But other than that, I feel like this game is fully original. The reasoning why is this game has manual abilities, nukes, and some features like um, unit buffing, which is having a character in your loot uh, slot buffing a certain category for the characters you have equipped it. I personally love playing this game. All right, and the variety of characters they have, from either ultra units slash miracle units, LRs and SRs, because they have the gotcha system, is that. A lot of these characters has manual abilities and some don't and have a specific order. The reason why I love this game is this game does not believe in power creep whatsoever. Any, any character from old, new, and have evolutions can be good in any sort of way, being buffed by leader slots from old previous characters to now meta. Power creep is basically like having a really good character Let's say Shanks for right now, and the next update, they have a new character that does double his damage and a better SBA. So pretty much having better stats than the last previous character, and then they turn outdated. But in Enemy World Tower Defense, they completely just didn't do that. Okay, some characters in this game doesn't do really good damage and aren't really that good, but if they have an Evo, they gradually improved by 150 times better, or have two Evos. Personally, this game loves to add evolution characters to the either base form, to the first form, and to the second form. Any character could be good from old, previous, new, and that's how it works. Uh, my main concern about this game, after the full rework, because the anniversary rework was supposed to come out this summer, but come near the end. The main concern about new players about this game is how very overwhelming the materials and how to get characters is because when they get a character from the banner they usually expect how can I get better at the game and improve the characters so if they do this and they have to see they have to get damage requirement a bunch of gold and a bunch of 
materials required for the character, I feel like they'll be overwhelmed. But this game is not bad for complete flexibility. Uh, this same goes for Miracle Creations, which is Miracle Units, which is like a one-up character, which basically have better characters, but they can only be either one or two, three placement, like limited placement, but they have a certain gimmick towards them that makes them really good. For example, Blackbeard uh, having a despair passive, which basically makes him way a good unit to get more damage. But this character could get outclassed by Kurumi since her passive is full Uh This game is really good. I would love to be a tester in this game, honestly. And I wish this game had more recognition than it originally had. Uh, as we speak, this game has around 2.5k players playing the game. And that's soon after, about a month or two after their anniversary update, which they fully reworked the game through animations, character models, and everything. And they had originally had 50k players, and then they dropped down to 2k. My main concern about how the devs could gradually improve the game is probably more advertisement or some promises to keep the game alive. Like, I feel like they don't try hard enough to keep players back, but a lot of YouTubers I've seen on this game either have every character evolved, every unit in the Miracle Creation, or just gradually prepping for the next update. I believe this game is, I say, 8 out of 10. I wish they can improve. Moving on. Anime Royale. This is probably going to be the last game that I'll be talking upon on this video because it's getting way too long. And it literally came out after Multiverses and Special. I, I don't know what's up with all these games coming out roughly around the same time. Or I must be like delusional, but that's that. The game is good overall. So much potential. Good originality, despite being the same old anime tower defense game, at least they're being somewhat different. The map models look really good. This is a One Piece map, and I never, like, watch One Piece. The models are not bad. Some, I say, they gradually need improvement. And some of the shiny skins are very questionable that they could improve on, like Jotaro. Over heaven, I, I don't know why they would do that. They could have just given part four or part six. Uh, but my main concern about this game is please buff splash size. I can understand a splash is meant to be small and it, it covers a circle placement. But if lines in this game is really good, gradually really far. If lines cone are really good, I feel like they need to buff splash because. The smallest splash I've seen so far is probably Jotaro's, and that's reasonable because Star Platinum is a close range stand, and he would not have this bit much range for his splash. But other characters having similar range like he does doesn't make no sense. I feel like they either would be slightly larger or smaller. This could be a choice difference because you can see the um, the enemy's hitbox is a large circle, and it could be gradually improved on. That is just my opinion on the game. But yeah, uh, this game is literally just your average tower defense game that recently came out. But at least this one is trying to be different with the lobby menu. Uh, the music is different. It's actually original, unlike specials. And this is probably one of the best games out so far until probably Vanguard comes out. Uh, I'm going to make a part 2 video on this. If Vanguard comes out or there's more com games coming out. Anime last time, I'm not going to put a touch on that until Vanguard comes out because I'm probably going to make another four-part game video discussing about this. And I usually don't make game videos about this. I don't make scripts. I just go lowball it and stuff. But but yeah, uh, if you got this far, thank you for watching the video. Uh, surprise, surprise, this is how I'm going to return. Uh, I, there's probably clips I can probably post that, that could be their own video. But I just felt like recently... That I'm starting to hate how many tower defense are in the game. This is probably going to be part one. But thank you for watching. Please subscribe because this took a lot of work. And animating the first part, voicing it, editing it, all done by myself. It was really hard on its own. But thank you for watching and enjoy this video, bro.